آلہ ذرا رحمت اللہ علیہ نے اس فتنوں کو دیکھا اور فرمایا وی نیڈ ٹو ہیو اے یونائٹڈ فورس اف دی اہل السنہ والجماعہ دی اہل السنہ والجماعہ وٹ ایور سل سے یو می بی فرام یو نیڈ ٹو یونائٹ ٹوگیدر اینڈ ہی سیز تھری تھنگس تین چیزوں کی سخت ضرورت ہے ایکاش اس مجلس میں اور حاضرین میں سے سامعین میں سے کوئی شخص ان باتوں پر عمل کرے تو انشاءاللہ امید ہے کہ اللہ تعالی اہل السنہ والجماعت کو وہی عظیم مرتبہ اور وہی عظیم شوکت دوبارہ اللہ تعالیٰ اسے عطا فرمائے پہلی بات جس کی ضرورت ہے وہ فرمائے علماء کے اتفاق The first thing which Allah mentions is We need unity of the علماء علماء of the اہل السنت والجماعة Irrespective of their spiritual background Irrespective of their spiritual order Irrespective of their class in society They need to unite together لیکن اللہ عز الرحمت نے بعد میں فرمایا کہ علماء کا یہ حال ہے کہ حسد کا بازار گرم ہے With utmost shame There is jealousy and there is enmity between the علماء Between the leaders of the اہل السنت والجماع Allah is talking about this more than a hundred years ago اس زمانے کا حال اللہ تعالیٰ جانتا ہے Because in order to unite, we need to crush our ego. Someone needs to crush their ego, subdue their ego, and go to the other person to unite. But people don't want to do that. And hence we have individual efforts, not a collective effort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support all of these, uh, inshallah, individual efforts. And may we see that day where we have a collective effort, Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'at united under one banner, the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The second thing he mentions is تَحَمُّلِ شَاقْ قَدْرِ تَاقْ People need to endure hardships to the best of their ability. تمام لوگوں کو اپنی طاقت کے مطابق مشقت برداشت کرنی ہوگی. یہ نہیں کہ صرف ایک ہی شخص تمام اہل السلم و جمعت کا کام کرے کتابیں لکھے بھی اس کی پھر پروفریدی بھی کی جائے اسے پھر چھاپا بھی جائے اسے پھر تقسیم بھی کیا جائے لوگوں کو کہا جائے کہ یہ کتابیں پڑھو نہیں اہل سنت والجماعت کے اندر ایسے طبقات ہونا چاہے جو اپنے اپنی ذمہ داری سمجھے اور ہم تمام یہ فریضہ سمجھے کہ ہماری ایک اوپری یہ ذمہ داری ہے کہ ہم اہل سنت والجماعت کے عقائد کی حفاظت کریں everyone should put their utmost effort to propagate the pristine teachings of the اہل سنت to defend the teachings of the اہل سنت پھر فرماتے ہیں عمراء کا انفاق لوجہ الخلاق علماء کا اتفاق تحمل شاق قدر بطاق عمراء کا انفاق لوجہ الخلاق جو اہل سنو و جواد میں سے خوشحال طبقے ہیں مالدار لوگ ہیں جن کے پاس بچے پیسے ہیں تو وہ اللہ تعالیٰ کی رضا کی خاطر علماء اہل سنو و جماعت پر کتابوں کی اشارت پر مدارس و مراکز اہل سنو و جماعت کے قیام پر یہ پیسے خرج کرے اللہ تعالیٰ اس کے ذریعے دین کا حیاء فرمائے گا اللہ تعالیٰ انہیں بہترین عجر دنیا میں بھی عطا فرمائے گا اس سے کرون ہاتھ درجہ زیادہ عج قیامت میں عطا فرمایا ہے لیکن ہم دیکھیں آلہ حضرت نے خود فرمایا ہے ہم اپنی شادیوں میں دیکھیں کتنا خرج کرتے ہیں دس ہزار پاؤنڈ پندرہ ہزار بیس ہزار یہ تو منیمم ہے کم از کم اور جب کوئی تمہارے پاس اہل سنو و جماعت کی اداری کے لیے اہل سنو و جماعت کی تصنیف کی شاد کے لیے علماء اہل سنو کی خدمت کے لیے اور جو خوشحال علماء نہیں ہے ان کی خدمت کے لئے آپ سے پیسے مانگتے ہیں کہتے ہیں پانچ پاؤں لے جاؤ دس پاؤں لے جاؤ اور سمجھتے ہیں بڑا حسان کر لیا ہے اور یہ نہ سمجھو کہ تم اس سے چھوٹ جاؤ گے قیامت کے دن ہر شخص سے اس کی ہر ہر نعمت کے بارے میں پرسش ہوگی پوچھا جائے گا یہ مال جو تجھے اللہ تعالیٰ عطا فرمائے تُو نے اس مال سے کیا کیا ہے اور پھر اس کے بعد آلہ حضر رحمت اللہ علیہ نے ایک عظیم دس نکاتی پروگرام ہمیں عطا فرم اور ہمیں مجدد آزم کے اس دس نکاتی پروگرام کا احیاء کرنا چاہیے انہوں نے تو دین کا احیاء فرمایا ہمیں بے کم از کم اس دس نکاتی پروگرام کا احیاء کرنا چاہیے کیا فرمایا اہل سنت والجماعت کی کامیابی کے لیے آلہ زن دس نکاتی پروگرام بیان فرمائے پہلا پروگرام پہلا نکتہ کیا ہے عظم الشان مدارس کھولے جائیں باقاعدہ تعلیمیں ہو 
there should be grand institutes, institutions of the Ahlu Sunnah Wajama established. He didn't just say mosques, huge multi million pound mosques with huge minarets, with huge domes. He said, no grand institutes of sacred knowledge. Because what benefit is there of mosques where there is no educational system? In America, because of the lack of the education of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'at and them being bereft of the sacred knowledge, our masajid are being taken by the heretics. The Wahhabi and the Deubandiyya are hijacking our mosques. We are building our mosques for them. Why? Because the fundamental thing which Allah mentioned was education. We have neglected it. We are spending more money on programs, on these ceremonies, on these huge grand gatherings. Whereas so little is being spent on the foundations of the Ahlu Sunnah, which is educating the young children, educating the next generation. Abne Farmai, Baqaida Ta'limu, there should be a robust system of education in every single institute of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah. We need to revamp, reconstruct, and revive the educational system amongst the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah. For 10 hours, students are studying with us. They are an amana to us. They are given as a trust to us. What are we doing with them? And as being a teacher myself and through experience, we know that we need to put utmost effort in order to inculcate discipline, in order to inculcate the true teachings of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'at to the students. This is the utmost responsibility, the foremost responsibility of the teachers teaching in any given madrasa of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'at. The first thing which Allah says for the revival of the Ahlu Sunnah is to establish madrasa, schools, institutes of sacred knowledge in which there is a robust system of sacred knowledge. The second thing he mentions, You should give bonuses, have a reward system. Students who do well, award them. Give them a monthly sponsorship so that they are connected with the madrasa. Why? Because at the end, ultimately, they will be connected to the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah and then they will carry out sincere work for the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But how much do we spend on the students of the sacred knowledge? Sponsorship. It doesn't happen. We will give our children, our own children, money for entertainment, for games. But when it comes to sponsoring a student of the sacred knowledge here or abroad, our pockets become empty. Allah says, Talaba ko wazaif mile, ke khahi na khai girveda ho unhe paise diye jaye, taake wo khub mehnat ke saath taalim hasil kare. Number three, mudarrisoon ko besh qarar tankhahe unki karwaayun par di jaye. The mudarrisin of the Ahlu Sunnah wa teachers should be given an appropriate amount of wage. Allah says this, so that they can have focus completely on educating. Not that they go here, there, and everywhere in order to earn a living. They are given enough from the madrasa itself that they are fully engaged. They give their 100% towards imparting their sacred knowledge. It doesn't happen anywhere. I can guarantee you the same old people who are talking about this are spending thousands on maulid gatherings when it comes to giving money to their ulama, to the mudarrisin, their pockets go empty. Well, it's not their own money, it's the money of the people. And if we do not see these days in which we fund the ulama, give them the true wage that they, that they uh, uh, um, are capable for, then unfortunately, Ahlu Sunnah are going to go down and down and down. Our mosques are going to be empty. We are in a modern society now, in the 21st century, we need to wake up. Before, we could have gone you know, away with paying someone peanuts. But now it doesn't work. Like if you want a qualified imam teacher imparting education to the people, you need to pay them properly. We need younger people from the younger generation to come into this field. Who's going who's gonna to take the post of an imam or a lecturer or a teacher in a madrasa? They have got so many avenues where they should get, be paid 20 grand a year. Who's going to come to the mosques of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah? Who's going to come to impart knowledge in the madaris of the Ahlu Sunnah wa Jama'ah? Because we're not paying them properly. 
The money is there, but we are sitting on that money. It's not being used properly. And then he mentions Rabi'an. Taba'i talaba ki jaanch ho jis kaam ke zyada munasib dekha jaye maqool wazifa dekar usme laga jaye inspect and examine the skill of each student in the class not every student is an orator not every student is a writer not every student you know is has a specific quality but you look and examine the qualities of each student whatever quality you see in that polish that quality and use it for the benefit of the Ahlul Sunnah. Pay them. If he's good in, in using computers, use him to spread the knowledge of the deen through media, through the computers, through, you know, whatever is in that field. If he sees someone who is a good translator, pay money to these students so that they translate the works of the Ahlul Sunnah into the English language to spread far and wide. This is what al is saying. Number five. Those from your students who are now qualified, spread them far and wide throughout the country. Don't just keep them restricted towards or in one locality. Spread them far and wide so that the work of the deen is spread far and wide. حمایت مذہب اور رد بد مذہبہ میں مفید کتب اور رسائل مصنفوں کو نظرانے دے کر تصنیف کرائی جائے پی منی گیو منی سپورٹ فائنینشلی سپورٹ دوز آفرز اینڈ رائٹرز ٹو رائٹ بکس ان ڈیفینڈنگ دا پرسٹین ٹیچنگ آف دی اہل سننا ان ریفیوٹنگ دا ہیٹروڈاکس سیکس پی دا منی وی ڈونٹ ڈو دیٹ آئی مین بکس آر بینگ سولڈ ایٹ میئر basic minimum amounts just to cover the cost, the expenditure of printing and publishing the books. I'll give you a prime example. Uh, a couple of Jumas back, we announced three books that were published. Do you know how many people got those books? How many sets were sold? Four. And then we complain, what's happening to, what's happened to the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah? And I just conclude this as the illiterate level that we've come down to. A show of hands amongst people, amongst people, how many people actually read a book? You will maybe find a handful of people actually read a book. Let alone supporting the writers, the authors to write books, supporting the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We can't even read their books. We've not even got time to read. We've got time for everything else apart from reading and apart from uh, educating ourselves. And then he mentions... تصنیف شدہ اور نو تصنیف رسائل عمدہ اور خوش خط چھاپ کر ملک میں مفت شائع کیے جائے those sponsorships those people who sponsor the books these books should then be spread far and wide for free across the entire country but if you've not got the money how are you going to do that if people have not got the passion and the zeal to actually focus on this very important aspect of propagating the deen, they are more concerned about food and rice and curry, feeding themselves after maulid gathering and spending X number of, X thousands of pounds on such gatherings without taking a slightest concern towards the most important aspects of propagating as sunnah wa jama'ah. What's going to happen? And then he says, Thaminan shahroon shahro, aap ke safir nigrar rahe. جہاں جس قسم کے وائز یا مناظر یا تصنیف کی حاجت ہو آپ کو اطلاع دیں آپ سر کو بھی اعادہ کے لیے اپنی فوجے میگزین رسالے بھیجتے رہیں ان ایچ لوکیلٹی ان ایچ پلیس ان دا کنٹری یو شوڈ ہیو یور اون ریپرزینٹیو ہو انفارم یو اباؤٹ دا نیڈس آف دیٹ پلیس اف دے نیڈ بکس یو سینڈ دیم بکس اف دے نیڈ علما یو سینڈ دیم علما If they need money to establish madrasas and madaris of the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, you give the financial support. But we have no network system like this. Everyone be, everyone's busy is in, in his own world. The day where we have a network system amongst the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, Alhamdulillah, we will have, we will spread and kindle the light of the nur of the Prophet Sallallahu in the hearts of people, not only in this country, far and wide across the entire globe. But at this current stage, it is just a dream. We hope that it, this dream materializes and comes into a reality one day. And then he mentions Tasiyan, who is in the middle of the world and in his own work, he will be able to make a job and make a job and make a job and make a job and make a job. 
We look at people who are skilled in a particular field. And if they've got a job, give them the wage and use them to work for the deen. Pay them money and use the skill that they have to propagate the teachings of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaat. And then he says, Ashiran, aapke mazhabi akhbar shaye ho, aur waqtan fa waqtan har qism ke himayat mazhab mein muzameen tamam mulk mein baqeemat wa bila qeemat rozana ya kam askam haftawar pohunchate rahe. You should have, the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaat should have a weekly newspaper, a magazine that is issued, released every single week, if not every week, then every month in which you mention current events and the solutions and the uh, reports on the updates of what are the next tasks, what is needed for the Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, so that you can engage people in your own network, you can keep them updated. Again, all of this boils down to a network system. We have no proper uh, Islamic magazine, Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Not even a monthly magazine, not even a yearly magazine. We have it in Urdu, many of them, but not many in English. And then Arazza mentions at the end, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ishaad farmaya, Aakhir zamane mein deen ka kaam bhi dirhamo dhanani se chalega. In the latter days, the work of the deen, don't be dreaming and thinking that these ulama and mudarrisin, they get their wage from the heavens. Money grows in their backyard, on their trees. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, in the latter days, the work of the deen, the propagation of religion, and defending and upholding the truth and defending the pristine teaching of the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah will happen through money, through financial support. But if your money is being wasted in weddings, if your money is being wasted in your uh, family functions, thousands of pounds, and when someone comes knocking on your door asking for money for the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah, you give five pounds, then don't cry and whinge when your own children go to the Bad Madhabs and become heretics and, hetero and affiliate themselves with the heterodox sects. This was the very reason why Imam Ahmad Riza rahimahullah established a Darul Uloom in Manzal Islam in Barili Sharif. When the Sayyid Sab said to him, O oh, Imam, on Yawmul Qiyamah, if you excuse yourself from establishing an institute of the sacred knowledge in Barili Sharif, and if my children or other people, their children go to the heterodox, to the, to, to the heretics, and they become heretics, I will lodge a complaint against you in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. At that very moment, Allah said, "Inshallah, I will establish Dalum," and he did so. Manzar Islam. And Alhamdulillah, since that day, more than five Dalums have been established in that city. But this is the passion we need. We need to understand our priorities. We have money, Alhamdulillah. I'm not saying we've not got money. Whatever money you will give, Allah will multiply that in barakah in this dunya and most in the akhirah. Spend it wisely, support the ulama of the sunnah, support the madaris and the marakis of the ahlul sunnah wa jama'ah, support the students of the sacred knowledge, boost their confidence, encourage them, and inshallah we shall see, we shall pave our way towards glory and triumph inshallah in this dunya, and bliss and blessings in the akhirah. Wa ma'alayna illa balagh, assalamu alaykum.